G'day guys and what? Whoa. Is that gonna be my new intro? Let's just roll with it. Today's video is the first installment in a series that I'm doing about living in London. I move in a couple of weeks and I kind of wanted to just document my journey and my experience in the job market and just in the social aspect of the city and even mistakes that I'm probably going to make. I really wanted a place where I could just express all of that so this seems like the perfect outlet. So how do you make the decision to pick up your life and move it across the world? You just sort of do. <laughs> I mean, I know that sounds crazy, but to an extent you know if you want to live in a big city or if you want to live in the suburbs. For me, I sort of realised that big cities were my thing back in 2012 when I first went to New York and I was catching the F train to Brooklyn and I was wearing really high heels and I wasn't thinking about the pain that I was in from those high heels but rather the city that I was currently in. Does that make sense? Also, first pro tip, wear flats and sneakers everywhere. If you're going to wear heels, like take them in a bag or something because it's just, it's just a lot. <laughs> so as for documentation, there are a few options. I was fortunate enough to have my father born and raised in the UK. Um, but if you aren't in those circumstances where you can get a British passport, there are plenty of options for visas. So I believe there's tourism, work, and there's something that you can do if you're a student and wanting to spend some time over there. I think there's like an agreement within the Commonwealth as well, but you might want to check that. Another thing is that once you enter the UK, if you don't have any visas or anything like that, you do have three months to sort of get yourself together, maybe go to your country's embassy or something in, in the city and see what you can do about it. Let's talk about the job market. Websites like Indeed and Read.co.uk are going to be your best friend. Another thing to remember is that there are heaps and heaps of pubs in London and they have a huge turnover of staff because a lot of the employees there are travellers or students and so they just sort of turn over their staff really quickly and if you need a job fast always go to pubs first. I think when I go over there I'm probably going to get a job in a pub just to begin with and just to make sure I have an income basically. Another thing to remember is keep your resume or your CV and your LinkedIn really up to scratch. Make sure it's all perfect and make sure it's a style that reflects your personality. So the next topic I want to cover is budgeting. And this is probably the biggest concern for not only me, but everyone else who is currently residing in Central and Greater London. The rent there is extortionate. Places like Rightmove, um, there's another thing if you're just looking to set up with roommates, there's another website for that that I'm currently not sure about but I will put it in the description box below with all these other websites. Um, but yeah, rent is extortionate. House shares are a great, great idea just because most of the time all bills are included and that is a huge bonus. When it comes to buying groceries, try to buy home brand. 9 out of 10 times it actually comes out of the same factory that another higher end brand comes out of. So honestly it's just a price discrepancy and you'll save heaps of money and you probably won't notice much of a difference in taste. The next thing is to track your spending religiously whether it's buying a small item like a bottle of water at a train station or maybe some clothes on the other end of the spectrum then always just document it write down your money that you're spending and kind of connect it to your income so remember rent comes first then food then insurance and your phone plan and then you can start spending money on treating yourself three words for you treat yourself so if you're doing a house share then the majority of your bills are already included in the rent every month but if you're staying on your own in a studio apartment then you have to factor in the bills as well so there's a bit more of a thought process that goes into it 
If you're looking for more budget alternatives within the clothing sort of scheme of things, I highly recommend Primark. It's really decent quality and it's really cheap prices. Another thing is to thrift shop. There are so many thrift stores in the UK in general, but especially in London, and a lot of consignment stores. So if you do want to treat yourself, but you don't want to buy something that's really, really expensive, then definitely look into buying consignment designer pieces. So that is it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. Next week's one will potentially be about packing and sort of condensing your life into two big suitcases that you're taking over with you. Um, so stay tuned for that. Also, I'm going to Italy before I head off to London and there's heaps of things that I want to film and heaps of vlog content that will most likely be going up on the channel. So don't forget to subscribe, comment down below with whether you're more of a city person or a suburb person. Does that make sense? I think that makes sense. And where you would like to live the most in the world. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as well and I will see you guys next week. Bye.